I'm Drew Wilkinson, an assistant professor of neurosurgery at Penn State Medical Center. I'll be discussing the December case of the month, which involves flow diversion of an unruptured middle cerebral artery aneurysm. I'd like to thank my chair and partner, Dr. Kevin Carcroft, for contributing the case. This accompanies a CNS Spotlight paper of the month entitled Flow Diversion for Middle Cerebral Artery Aneurysms, an International Cohort Study by Diestra et al. Use of flow diverters for sidewall aneurysms of the internal carotid artery has increased after multiple studies have shown their effectiveness at vessel wall remodeling and eventual aneurysm occlusion. However, flow diversion is used less commonly for more distal aneurysms, including those in the MCA. We present the case of an incidentally discovered irregularly shaped, shaped MCA aneurysm treated successfully with flow diversion. Factors that influenced the decision to offer treatment included multiple excrescences off the fusiform appearing body of the aneurysm. A few points make MCA aneurysms challenging for flow diversion. First, many MCA aneurysms such as these occur at the bifurcation, often making surgical management or traditional coiling more straightforward than flow diversion. Consequently, flow diversion is more often used in MCA in cases of non-bifurcation aneurysms, uh, such, as the, such as in this case, giant partially thrombosed aneurysms, blister aneurysms, or recurrent aneurysms. Second, preservation of the lateral lenticular stripe perforators is important, and much like perforators in fusiform basilar artery aneurysms, these th theoretically can be compromised by the high metal coverage of flow diverters, especially if there's not good wall apposition. Third, the more distal position and reduced diameter of the MCA in comparison to proximal ICA aneurysms can make placement and deployment more challenging. As with placement of any flow diverter, proximal tortuosity, whether through a tortuous carotid siphon, or as in this case, a very tortuous proximal MCA, makes for a much more challenging deployment. Adequate proximal support is essential with an intracranial support catheter used in this case, as you can see here, up to the intracranial ICA. In this case, uh, we use the pipeline flex devices. The first flow diverter placed retracted slightly proximal to the second excrescence we, we were trying to cover and a second flow diverter was placed. When placing multiple devices, it is important not to undersize subsequent devices as this may lead to poor wall apposition, resulting in parent vessel stenosis or thrombosis or failure of the aneurysm to occlude. As, ex as is expected for flow diverters, aneurysm obliteration is not immediate, though some stasis can be seen here immediately post-deployment, which in general is a good prognostic sign for eventual aneurysm thrombosis. The patient was continued on dual antiplatelet therapy, uh, as he was a verified Plavix responder with assays, uh, until follow-up at six months, showing remodeling of the fusiform portion of the vessel with complete exclusion of the excrescences. Thank you for watching this case of the month. And I encourage you again uh, to check out the uh, paper by Diestro et al. Thank you.